everyone, Christy here, and today I'm participating in RBG's annual butterfly count. Every year, RBG ecologists and volunteers identify as many butterflies as they can across various sites here at RBG. I'm here with RBG's terrestrial ecologist, Lindsay Barr, to learn a little bit more about citizen science and the butterfly count. Hi, Lindsay. Hi, Christy. Can you tell us a little bit more about what volunteers do during the butterfly counts? Nuts in Hand participants will explore RBG nature sanctuaries at specific locations in search of butterflies. If we can't identify a butterfly from afar, then we'll grab our net, catch it, and take it, a closer look at it using identification guides to get it to species. So by having volunteer participants assist experts like you, Lindsay, in these butterfly counts, they're really a form of citizen science, right? Yes, absolutely. It's a great way to encourage citizens um, to participate in our monitoring and our science work that we do here. We also encourage iNaturalist users to post their observations while they're enjoying our nature sanctuaries and garden areas. Um, and then we actually look at that data over time and that gives us an idea of what butterflies are present or absent on our properties. So how many individual butterflies do you typically see during one of your butterfly counts? So in the past, we typically see about 400 to 500 butterflies per count, and we typically see 20 to 25 different species of butterflies. One year, we counted over 2,000 individual butterflies. On years with really high counts like that, it's typically because the European skipper had a really good year. This is a non-native butterfly whose host plants are European grasses that are often found in naturalized fields. Some years the conditions will be just right and they'll have what's known as a banner year when their numbers are much higher than normal. Wow, that's a lot of butterflies. That makes me wonder, what is the most common native butterfly found at RPG? That's a bit of a tough question because butterfly population numbers can actually increase and decrease from year to year quite significantly. But consistently over the last three years, we've been seeing um, the monarch butterfly as one of the, our more common native butterflies and that's a species at risk, so that's really promising numbers. That's very neat. So Lindsay, if you're tracking this data on an annual basis, what can the data trends tell us about butterflies or the local ecosystems? Butterflies are very sensitive to um, their environment and they can act as good um, indicators of habitat quality. So we look at the different butterfly species we have recorded over the counts and uh, it tells us if we, we're seeing declines in butterfly numbers and that's a red flag for us. Um, and we compare it to our other monitoring work um, to figure out um, what conservation actions we should take from there. What are some ways people at home can help support butterflies here in Ontario? That's a good question. I like to recommend that people plant native plants at home. Um, a lot of butterflies have a specific host plant that they rely on to complete their life cycle. For example, monarch butterflies um, require milkweeds to complete their life cycle. The monarch caterpillar feeds solely on milkweed leaves um, at its, the caterpillar stage. So what you could do at home is um, research what kind of host plant your favorite butterfly likes and plant that. I also like to recommend planting a variety of native plants, flowering plants in the garden. Um, you want bloom times to happen throughout the seasons and that way you attract multiple different species of butterflies throughout the year. Thanks Lindsay for letting me join you today at our butterfly count and share this interesting project with everybody at home. And thank you for tuning in. Be sure to check out rbg.ca slash at home for more interesting videos, activities, and things that you can do to connect with nature at home. Bye!